Hey fam, what's up, what's up, what's up? This is Robert Anton here, robertanton.com, bringing you the X Factor US commentary. Um, we are on to the second round of auditions, and today they were doing Miami and Dallas, right? Um, quickly, I think I'm gonna tell you guys how the show works. If you didn't see my last commentary, that's the first time you're seeing it. Um, X Factor US, if you have not seen British X Factor, it happens like this. They audition in front of four judges, and between uh, today i think it was like five thousand people in the audience so they have the judges and the audience that they are auditioning for um if they get three yeses they go through uh to the next round and once everybody's chosen for the next round they'll be split into four categories and each judge will be mentoring a category um the prize is a five million dollar contract with sony records and a starring role in a commercial that'll be playing at the Super Bowl. So, you know, it's a pretty big prize. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna get on to the rest of the commentary. So they started day, uh, this day two basically auditions in Miami, right? And they said there were 5,000 people that showed up in the audience, you know? And first up, was Ashley Rose Sassoni. She was 27, and she just started out, she was like me. I mean, she was a chatterbox, but she was just going on and on about crazy stuff. That, yeah, I think, yeah, that does sound familiar, does <laughs> But I thought she was very funny, personally, um, but she just didn't have much of a voice, so, you know, of course, they passed on her. Um, next up, I have Chanel Simone uh, Dixon. She was 34, and she they, they showed a small clip of, of her, and she was just bad. It just it just didn't look good. I just put in my notes was bad. Um, next up with Canning Road, a group, and these are some clips that they were showing, and um, I actually thought that they had a nice little sound, but they passed on them. They did not get put through. They had the Dream Girls with a Z, and they only showed a few seconds of their clip. But um, it was just funny because, like, they only sang for a few seconds, but they showed more time of, like, their brother or cousin or whoever he was going off about it. Like, they should have gone through it. And he was, I mean, this man was upset. Like, he, he was, like, ready to, like, go kill them, right? They had Gloria Estefan come out. Um, she came out outside and made an appearance and, like, tried to hype up the crowd and stuff like that. So that was nice to see. Next up was Caitlin Curtis. She was 16. She did Firework by Katy Perry. Um, I thought she had an okay voice, right? And she played the uh, piano herself. That was She played the track, you know, but the track was of her playing piano. Um, but she didn't make it through. Uh, and she was like, she was just unconsolable. She was just like crying and stuff and breaking down and please don't pass me up. Ah. So finally Paula went up to her, you know, and tried to console her a little bit and was like, you know, L.A. was like, you know, this is this is where you like have to come back stronger next time and all that. And she wasn't hearing it. You know, she was just she was just broke down. OK, um, next up was Nick Voss. He was 21 and he did Trouble by Elvis Presley. I thought he had a lot of style and pizzazz. What I wasn't crazy about was his voice. I was saying personally on Twitter, I said he kind of reminded me of Paul McDonald because Paul McDonald had a very strange character -y type voice, but it didn't seem to have a lot of range or anything like that. He kind of reminded me of Paul McDonald from American Idol. And I just, I just wasn't crazy about the sound of his voice. Although his performance was good. You know, he did the dancing and stuff. You know, he owned the stage and all that. They actually put him through. Um, so let's see if he's actually going to open up and if he's going to do a lot more. Yeah, I, I, I wrote in here, I said, why the drama after three yeses? Uh, because I like, they make this whole thing about you only need three yeses to go through, but then like they'll get three yeses and then like on the fourth one, they'll be like, you know, coming with the dramatic music and all this good stuff. Like it really matters what the fourth person says. I'm wondering if once they corral everybody who has gotten through, you know, if, they have too many or something like that. You know, do the fours go first and then they choose between the threes? I, I don't know. If anybody watches British X Factor, let me know if there's a difference because I'm like, why in the world? You know, and another question really quickly. Oh, <laughs> why do they give their commentary first and then they go back and they do votes? I mean, you know, it just seems redundant to me. It just seems like it's just taking up a bunch of time. And generally by a person's commentary, we know how they are going to vote. So they should give the commentary and vote. Give the commentary and vote. Give the commentary and vote. You know, at the same time, instead of going through all four and then going back to get their vote, it just it just seems kind of strange and redundant to me. Next up, I have Ashley Deckard. She was 14 and she was a ghost hunter, right? She did <laughs> she did price tag by Jesse J. And uh, I, I, I wrote she was just kind of a karaoke type singer. You know, she, she could carry a tune, but it just wasn't great. 
Um, but the funny thing is, after she left, you know, because they were saying, could she bring the ghosts and all that, they made this whole thing about the lights going on and off and, you know, people being really strange, you know, and like she had really brought ghosts into the place or something like that. So it was, it was entertaining. It was an entertaining bit because there wasn't a whole lot of scene like to be talent going through at the time. Next up, I have Kevin Martin. He was 54. He did BG. Um, yeah, it was just kind of strange. And I don't think there's really been someone who goes through like a major competition just doing like falsetto. Um, yeah, but it, it, you know, it was entertaining, but I didn't think it was very good. Mar Maribana Bis. Guso, I think that's it, right? She did summertime and she went through. And let me tell you, I thought that she was very much strange and her voice was okay, but it wasn't great. Um, she did this big note that you know everybody's like, oh yeah, but yeah, I was I was surprised that they paid her any attention, but they sent her through. And actually, with her and the guy uh, uh, and. Um, Nick Voss, I wrote on Twitter that it seemed like they were starving for like talent and then they were like lowering their standards a little bit because they just didn't seem like people that they would normally take if they had a bunch of talent there. Next up was Two Squared and I, I had some girls and they were dancing and singing and they looked good and they had nice voices, they did good harmonies um, and they made it through. Then we had Kendra Williams who was 32, sang Almost Home, sang to, oh, Black Girl, sang Can't Country. And just, I, I just thought she sounded great. She was very connected. You know, she had a good voice. I can't wait to hear more of her. They were just showing little clips of people by this time. Then Brendan O'Hare. Uh, and the only thing I wrote was Nicole was flirting. <laughs> Nicole was flirting hard. Uh, I don't even remember what he sang at this moment. The male soprano boy didn't get his name, but he had such a beautiful voice. People were just flying by by this point. Just a seriously beautiful voice. And I, I, I believe he made it through, and I can't wait to see more of him. Um, if you know his name, pop it down in the comments for me. Next up, Melanie Amaro, 18. She did Listen by Beyonce. Um, she had the audience on her feet, and I wrote with good reason. She had a crystal clear voice. She had great placement. She was comfortable on the stage. She performed the song without overdoing it. It, everything was just perfectly in place. I wrote that she was might near, my grandma said might near, she was might near perfect. And I just, oh my God, Nicole was crying. You know, every, all the judges were like, you know, you are the reason why we, you know, do this show, blah, 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 and the other, because she was, she was really phenomenal, and I can't wait to see more of her. So next we went on to Dallas. And uh, first up was Johnny Rogers, he was 17. Uh, he did an original song, which I keep telling you guys, do not do an original song. I, I guess he made it all the way through with an original song. But he had a decent voice. He had a solid, decent voice. He was kind of quirky, kind of goofy and stuff like that. But he just did this original song, which was very not very good at all. The song wasn't good, you know. And it just, it, if he'd have done a cover and done a decent job, he might have made it through. When you do a big competition type thing, do not do do something where you can quickly be compared to that artist favorably or unfavorably but somebody can quickly say oh they have this 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 oh they might be able to do this oh i hear this in their voice because if they're listening to this original and it's bad they're not they don't have the time to tick off all these things in their mind and say well maybe oh well 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 i i if i was a judge at that point i would have been like can you do something you know that you know well, that you know that that's an, that's not an original, because I believe that he would have gone through if he wouldn't have been doing an original song. That's just my two cents, <laughs> and that's what you came for. Uh, yeah, Dylan Lawson was 18, um, and he said he sold his truck to come and perform. And I thought this boy was gonna sing country down. He started trying to rap and was just absolutely terrible just horrendous and i don't even know why they let him up on the stage for the comic factor this boy was so bad he wasn't even funny um yeah so michael and michelle a couple i suppose uh they got up and they did i think they did need you now um i don't i didn't write it i didn't put it in the notes but i think they did need you now um and i just remember that they both had very decent voices kind of big people heavy set but i thought they had very decent voices until they got they were kind of wobbling when they got to the to the um to the harmony and whatnot you know when they're singing together but i thought that they both had very decent voices very 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 nice decent voices you know but they didn't make it through curtis lawson was 19 i thought he was funny uh he 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 was doing this thing it, it, it sounded like he was trying to do like a 
like a vocal fry or something like that. But he was also doing this thing, and it sounded to <laughs> Paula said it sounded like a vacuum cleaner. I thought I thought Nicole was gonna say it sounded like a vibrator because that's what it sounded like. And I thought she was just on the precipice of saying it too, but she didn't say it. Uh, next up, we had Dexter Haygood. He was forty nine, and you know, he was talking how long he's been performing, you know, and they didn't tell his whole story up front. They let him sing first. And I thought he had the key, the crowd going and stuff. He's doing his thing. And then Simon called him a tribute act because he's doing James Brown. You know, and he got up and did his thing and it wasn't great. It was okay, but he had the crowd all up and stuff like that and doing everything. So they had him do another song and they cut to commercial. You know, there's like maybe he, I was thinking maybe he didn't have another song or something like that. So he did another James Brown song. He did as a man world but he had a lot more I don't know what it was it was like he had a lot more uh, empathy he had a lot more feeling he had a lot more emotion behind it so he wasn't just singing and performing the song he was actually feeling it and giving everything that he had and because of that he went through um, how far he's gonna go I don't know uh, but he did have a good solid voice He's an older guy and you know, Paula said, you know what, bring you, don't bring James Brown, bring you. And what people want to see in this performance, they, especially if you already have a decent voice, they want to see what you create out of whatever music that you're doing. And I'm looking forward to seeing what he does. Next up, I have Caitlin Caught. She did, she was 21. Uh, she did Stop in the Name of Love as a ballad. Now let me tell you, first when she walked out on the stage, L.A. Reid's eyes popped up and whoa, and I thought he's turning on the Mac he was talking to. He's like, you know, you know? <laughs> I was like, okay, let's hit it now. Um, but she actually had a nice voice. I, she had a lot of stage presence. She was so comfortable up there. I love the arrangement of the song that she did. Never heard it like Simon Alden said. They never heard an arrangement before. I had never. It was like kind of a little gospel -y ballad type thing going on. And she just, she just performed it well. She did good. I didn't think it was spectacular, but it was solid. And it was on point. It was on time. She had a very good look. And she went through. Last up was Xander Alexander. He was 27. This boy, I mean, I wrote this boy was a hot mess <laughs> in his interview, and he was way too catty. You know, he was just ripping on everybody. So I figured, you know what, if he's ripping like this, he must be like the shiznit. I mean, he gonna get up here, he gonna blow this place up. Well, he did a song called I'll Be. I forget who it's by. You guys pop it down in the comments for me. But it just it just wasn't good. Now, let me say this. He had a nice tone, a very nice tone. I could hear it right off, right when he started singing. But he just wasn't staying on pitch. You know, he wasn't solid. He, he got very, like, nervous. You know, he was making all kinds of excuses. So he didn't do his job. He didn't do what he was supposed to do. And they didn't put him through, right? And they were wobbling and weebling and stuff like that. And they asked him to do a second song and all this good stuff. But he just wasn't ready to produce, you know? And he was so catty. And it was the last, like, performance of the night. It was so anticlimactic that like, I didn't expect it at all. I thought they would end on a high note. And this boy was just like... Uh, people, people, if you're going to talk the talk, you better be able to walk the walk. Let me tell you, don't tell me that you're ripping on uh, Mariah Carey and Whitney Houston and you're going to get up here and you ain't even going to sing as well as, you know, Weird Al Yankovic, you know. I mean, yeah. So this is Robert Anton, robertanton.com. I am bringing you the commentary. I want you to talk back to me, tell me what you thought. I am also a singer-songwriter. On I have a series on here called So You Want to Be a Singer, helping young singers come up into the business, you know, and letting people know what kind of options there are. I also have an originals playlist. I have a bunch of original songs, so please check out my originals playlist and uh, come back to check out more of the commentary. All right, I'm out. Peace.